Hello, beautiful souls. How are you? It is so hot out in the country in the United States. And um, I think it's for a, a reason. I think it there's a reason behind it besides just making you miserable. I hope that you're able to find some comfort, some some cool air, some breezes, some cool water to take a dip in and cool off. Um, I completely empathize. I like moderate temperatures and I don't like high humidity, even though I was born and raised where it's a billion freaking degrees, lots of high humidity in the South. Um, I no longer live there. <laughs> I realized quite early on that I could find four seasons in a more moderate climate somewhere else in the country. So please stay safe out there. Today's video is another mission log disclosure. So it's the video follow-up to Truth Resonates podcast, episode 10. This one is known as Lucy Hold My Beer. And I will give you a, a premise of it. Um, in my role as commander of Delphinus's crew, um, there's been moments, a few moments, where uh, I will possibly tell you something you don't know already. And that is, there's a level of um, bureaucracy and slow rolling of change in all dimensions. And for me, that like I have a zero tolerance for that. We know that things need to change. To me, they cannot change fast enough. And when I have done all the processes, jumped through all the hoops, dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's and someone or someone's who have um, power and authority exert that in a way that causes things to not change uh, positively for the collective, I feel the need to affect that change if possible. And when I say that, it's not just me going, oh, I don't like that. Let's just go kick a door in. It's really more about seeing the patterns of negative and nefarious behavior not being addressed because the light beings abide by universal law so much so that they are fearful of um, stepping out of line and, or doing something without permission. So um, I have quite the reputation in many universes for being very decisive. I ironically had that reputation as charge nurse. I was charge nurse most of my career and supervisor. I've always been very decisive. I've had that, uh, it's been innate. It's, it, was a, it was something in my DNA. And I now know, because I've been a commander for a very long time, um, I, I try to have a very broad 40,000 foot view of things. And I can see the slow rolling, right? I can see where the processes start to take place and those that have been in these positions to say yay or nay for a very long time, eh, they just don't feel like, eh, we're going to wait. What do they have to lose? Like they've been in their positions for eons and it's not going to change unless they change things, you see? And so I saw that there were some hesitancy that would actually benefit them, but it, it harmed the collective. So it is my belief that the light beings, the way showers, the star seeds, those on the ascension path have done the work, the ones that are doing the work, we deserve positive change. We do not want any more dragging of the feet and beings in other dimensions who are living quite comfortably looking down upon us and going, oh, they'll be fine another month, year, decade, whatever. I had had it. So as I read through this mission log disclosure, um, I believe that this will come through very clearly. When I read it again for the podcast, I was pretty amped up. And so I can't tell you what that's going to look like but it might be kind of comical. So 
Here we go. And again, I want to remind you, violetlotusenergy.com is live. That's our website. We have our offerings there. It's more than just energy healing. Um, we have coffee ground readings. We have home and land clearings. We have crystal grids. We have vision boards. Um, we have tinctures and balms and all sorts of holistic recipes given to us by White Buffalo Calf Woman, uh, our grand. Things that are tried and true that are alternatives to um, Western medication and also the toxic chemicals that are on the market today. So please check that out and see if something resonates. Okay, so we're going to get into it. Um, again, if you're following with the podcast, this is going to be a video recap. You will have heard this information before, um, but it does have a different feel, I feel like, in the in the video format. So the prior week... I had discussed the egoic pull, the pervasive contamination of the indoctrination and the downside of choosing to not complete one's shadow work. Um, the consequences that come along when you choose to not complete your shadow work and the attacks that you open yourself up to as well as the attacks against light beings. Um, again, I'm going to say biblical laws, the Bible itself is man-made. They took the creators of the Bible, it's not Yeshua, it's not source creator. There were scrolls and and tablets that were created in their in the time of Yeshua and Maggie walking on this planet in their live stream. And most of them were destroyed, burned, hidden, and banned. So ask yourself, why are the Dead Sea Scrolls so important? Why was it so important that they took these scrolls to their grave, literally? Why did they hide them in clay pots in caves? Because it was the last known record of what truly happened. And yes, it diverges from the book because the book are Council of Nicaea edits that make the Vatican and the satanic Mithra uh, worshiping Constantine look like angels and they're not. So the biblical laws are man-made. Biblical laws only affect those that subscribe to the Bible. And I mean that sincerely. Universal laws are honored throughout all universes. In fact, the beings of Sirius C are considered to be the universal police and they enforce the universal laws in, a, in accordance with source creator, the archangels, and a whole host of other beings that try to keep the peace, so to speak. So our biblical laws don't make sense to them because they're man-made and they're not based on Christ consciousness. They're not based on unity consciousness, they're not based on the law of one. So if you are subscribing to what you think is a blueprint for how to be in this world. And it all comes within the bindings of a Bible. You're not, you're not really following universal law. And I invite you to investigate that for yourself. So universal laws govern all beings in all universes, all living beings in all universes. So I've said this before many, many times, the dark is not stupid. They're just evil. So they have many abilities. They have, they're very cunning and um, they can come up with all sorts of different ways to attack us and to set us up for failure and to put plans in place that harm us as a people, as a planet, not just us. We're not the only ones that they do this to, but we are a huge population of what they do this to, because this is earth school. This is where beings come to get a lot of their boxes checked in their soul evolution process. So this is a, a very target rich environment for, for, for those beings that want to collect souls. Now, when we want truth and yet we stifle how the truth is received, you're not truly, you're not truly in the spirit of wanting truth. You want, you want to be comforted that your truth is the truth and anything outside of that has to be wrong. So to that, I say, people have often asked Carl Jung, Dr. Carl Jung, will we make it? 
referring to the cataclysmic events of our time. And he always replied, if enough people will do their inner work, aka shadow work, the soul is the one thing that will pull us up through these and any emergencies. And you have to, you, you really should sit with that. Okay. If you have a broken leg, you have to do the work to heal the leg, allow it time to heal. That's your introspective phase in shadow work and soul growth. And then you have to do the rehab to build back your strength. In shadow work, that looks like taking your power back, enforcing healthy boundaries. And then you learn how to use the leg again to balance with the other side of your body. And whenever you balance your divine feminine, divine masculine and healed inner child is when you are at an optimal performance. So if I asked you to climb that mountain with your two-day-old broken leg, would you be able to do it? No. There's not a magic wand that's going to do that for you either. You have to put forth the work. It is no different in energy work. It is very vital to your success. It is vital to your evolution. It is vital to your own growth. And the more that you help yourself, you help all the beings around you. So I just wanted to put that out there. This drives home the message that no one will come to save you. The, the savior mentality that is um, shoved down your throat via the Bible and religion is meant to keep you leaning on the book, the congregation, the church, the priest, the, the pastor, whatever, so that you feel lost without them and they have the power. It's time to understand that you have the power to facilitate change in a positive way or a negative way in your own life. So if things are looking really crappy in your life right now, you have a lot of opportunity to change and spin it back up to the top in a positive way. You don't have to accept it unless you want to, unless you choose to. This is where free will choice really does liberate a being or trap them forever. So choose wisely to use Mother Sophia's words. When I realized that change begins with me, healing begins with me, ascending begins with me, elevating humanity begins with me, it was out of frustration because things were not happening. Things that I knew in the core of my being were very, very important to me that I wanted to see done. And I was hearing from others, they also wanted to see done wasn't happening. And I thought, when is something going to happen? And it hit me because it was a huge download from Source Creator. What are you waiting for? If you want change, be the change. If you want to see things change, change those things in yourself. If you already emulate the exact life that you want, then continue to give your energy to that because people will notice the changes. Trust me, they will. And it will help ripple through the community, the city, the state, the country, and the world. The more people that do this, it's just like an earthquake. So the frequency of positive vibes, if you're that one beacon of light, if you're that one dove in the darkness, your high frequency source light beaming out can negate a thousand negative beings, a thousand low vibration, low frequency beings. You can just blast them right into higher frequencies by being there without saying a word. So if you are those that lack the ability to confront others, speak your truth very um, assertively, that's okay. You don't need to just be truly authentic self in your integrity and walk that truth okay demonstrate it in your actions and let that be let that be the change that helps to change things in your world in our world i invite you to try that so with the rise in collective consciousness we had um one second 
Sorry, I had to get my post-it notes in order. This is from, you know, a transcript that I that I developed for the podcast, which is um, obviously a different feel. I tend to uh, riff in my videos. I don't tend to do much scripted in the videos. Um, but because it, it was November 2023, and gosh, that seems like five years ago, not just a few months, um, I do need to refer to my notes. So that's what I will be looking at. And I had to move a post-it out of the way. So this is basically um, where we started to discover that we had a lot more influence (laughs) than we realized. I don't really remember a time where I thought, oh, I'm, you know, this and, and, and I'm going to I'm going to have such a powerful presence. You know, I really don't think about myself that way. I think about myself and I think about our crew and I think about the guardians in a way that is very loving and compassionate and kind and accepting, but also very effective when everything needs to get done. So like we are the soft place you can fall. And we're also the hard wall that will stop you from harming others. It's just that simple. So. This is November 25th, 2023. We discovered along the way some influential charismatic karmic beings who in their life stream have quite a social media footprint and were considered soul family because at the time that our soul siblings were in their avatars, aka in their bodies, as a divine soul. And so... Our siblings walked into these beings that there was a connection to, and they, every single one of them had some traits that led to their downfall. They were in their ego, very egoic mind, very worried about what other people think and say about them, more so than doing their shadow work to be their true and authentic selves. They also refused to dig deep and do their shadow work. The shadow work freaked them out. They would talk about shadow work and they would point their finger at other people to do shadow work, kind of getting on their soapbox about it quite often, but were very poor at following through in their own shadow work and did a lot of escapism, which um, in, in a way I thought, okay, well, we could just, we can just um, approach this from a different avenue, you know. So we we push the LFG, love, forgiveness, and gratitude, to kind of hasten along what they were truly trying to completely skip over. And shadow work cannot be leapfrogged. The only way to get through it is to go through it. But going through it, while it's uncomfortable, and you revisit these core wounds and trauma and traumatic events and things that you would have rather never have happened in your life. Whenever you get to the realization that this is vastly soul contracted, that the villains in your life agreed to be the villains in your life before you ever arrived here. And they have actually done you a favor because they agreed to fulfill the soul contract that you all entered into and each and every role that was decided with the karmic board before arriving here. And so to me, it seems to be um, a choice that people make. They want to stay in their victimhood. That's what they know. And that's what they like. They like to be the victim. They like to talk about their pain. They like to to talk about their attacks. I speak about whatever attacks come about just to educate you that this shit really happens, but it doesn't have to just be accepted. You don't need to lay down and just be a doormat or a target. And so... um, It's a choice. And these people were all given the same education, the same assistance, the same um, advice, and they saw others around them doing it, but they just refused. So ultimately, after many, many attempts to assist them, we started to receive psychic and negative energy attacks from them. So when a being is triggered, it truly does guide them to their shadow work if they're willing to accept it. But someone in their ego who really truly feels like they're perfect or damn near perfect and has nothing to change, but everybody around them and their vortex has to change. You know what I'm talking about. 
they don't want to hear that they have things to work on. They dismiss it. And they then get their feelings hurt and they get offended. And then they start shooting off daggers. And that is a phrase, but it is also an energetic attack. When people in your world, no matter whether you really know them or not, decide that they're going to send you negative energy, it can be sent to you in the form of an energetic dagger. And they, they do that quite often. Um, and I can tell immediately when I've gotten one and I just remove it and take care of business. But most people don't understand what that pain is from. Most people don't understand what's happening to them. And they continue to engage with these beings that are actually attacking them. Wake up. So here we are after months, months of relentless and malevolent actions against myself and Delphinus's crew, all of our missions. Source Creator and Mother Sophia sent their archangels out to pick them up. So they picked up these souls. They picked up the soul of the being, their original soul, and they picked up the sibling soul that we had because there's a level of contamination now. So you have you have a sibling soul, a walk-in divine soul, one of my siblings that walked into one of these humans who's full of their ego and they're really, really trying to guide them from the higher self perspective, but the lower self won't let them in. So you have two, two energy bodies that are, that are culpable to the actions of the human. And the, the walk-in souls give them the benefit of the doubt, sometimes too much sometimes too much and they give them too much room and then next thing you know they are also complicit in some of these nefarious and negative acts so when they were brought in they were brought to um starship baba initially because they were being interrogated and my space self and the rest of delphinus's crew um the guardians space selves were with the interrogators because we had had uh, and our human selves and that consciousness had interactions with these beings. So we knew firsthand what had been said and what had been discussed. And then the actions and the reactions and all the things. And so we were asked to get to the bottom of it. And then our soul siblings had to, and the, and the souls of the other beings were then brought to source creator and mother Sophia's decision room. And they issued consequences to their actions not me so while on starship baba it it was a couple of weeks and they started to align and um cry on the shoulder of some of the beings some of the crew members of the ship that didn't have any interaction with them much before and um ask for mercy and ask for assistance and ask for collaboration and stopping this, um, stopping what the guardians are doing, stopping the, the work that we do to elevate and free humanity. And so after a couple of weeks of them being there, they used their same shenanigans and they actually enlisted more of our soul family um, to assist them to collaborate in halting, stopping, harming the guardians which ultimately harms the mission, which is leading to new earth. And so it, it harms you too. And why? You know, why do from the, the Pleiadian High Council members that didn't want to give the okay for positive things to happen because it changed their world to the humans around us now who don't want to change by doing shadow work because it will change their world. It's all the same reason that they do this ego they don't want to let go of whatever it is that they feel like they deserve nor do they want to feel any pain by doing true shadow work and uncovering the layers and layers and layers that need to be released because they like to live in their pain they like to be the victim they want to be on top they want to have power and control and prestige but in the, in other moments they play the victim so that they can reel more people in and get them behind them, um, you know, <laughs> holding up their torches for them. And so um, they leveraged their poor me stories and it became uh, 
very manipulative to very, very uh, many beings that were in assistance of the teams that were guarding them, feeding them, uh, providing them with their needs and such like that. So ultimately they, they um, caused, it was definitely free will choice, but it would not have happened had they not been so manipulative. They caused for many of our um, crew members on New Jerusalem and Baba to become complicit in their collaborations to stop us to, and to harm us, to send out um, negative energy attacks. So now we had an even longer list of treasonous behavior and betrayals. And there were 10 plus souls brought to Mother Sophia and Source Creator's throne, throne room for a decision on their actions. With every action, there are consequences. You can exercise your free will choice all that you want, but there are always consequences to your choices. So once those siblings had betrayed us and we determined all the the depth at which they had gone to, I enforced my healthy boundaries and the healthy boundaries of my crew and the things that I actually had dominion over, which are the telegram rooms and my channels at all. And I removed these beings, but I didn't remove them until I had reached out. Now there was a, a, a period of time where I sensed energetically what was happening. Energetically, I could feel the shift from, from love, compassion, loyalty, source aligned to, to being in flux or to being completely flipped away from source. And I would always reach out to these soul siblings because I wanted to assist. I wanted to say, you know, like, if you're not clear, let's, let's get you clear. Um, if you've got some trickster energy and you don't realize that that's the trickster higher self or the trickster source talking to you, like, let's get to the bottom of that and give you a leg up here. And all but two would ignore that reach out. They would ignore that attempt to communicate and help them. But then once they were removed, they were all poor me. Oh, this is the thanks I get. I get kicked out of the room. I get banned. I get blocked. Yes, you do. Because your free will choice allowed me my free will choice to kick you out. I'm not going to have people in our mission rooms who are not acting for the greater good in a positive manner manner if you are about yourself and your ego you got work to do and I can assist you in navigating that but I will not hold your hand while you harm other people that has to stop and you have to decide to do that and if you don't you have to sit with the consequences of it it's just that simple so we ultimately sent out our dragons and unicorns who have special abilities to detect deceit hidden contracts hidden agreements and dark agreements and once they were all um identified they escorted them to mother sophia and source creator and this began an epic cleansing mission i was not prepared for the level of um culpability that ran through all these galactic subgroups so ultimately we started with Star starship baba and new jerusalem and we cleared out everything that we found there but then we were also guided to locate the rest because they were always working with other people one mission always leads to the next that's definitely something that we've learned so we went to the galactic alliance and we cleaned them up space force we cleaned them up Pleiadian High Council, we definitely cleaned them up. Arcturian Council of Nine became the Arcturian Council of Five. Do the math. Galactic Federation of Light, they saw what we were doing and they cleaned themselves up before we got there. But they're cleaned up too. Inner Earth and Middle Earth. There were still some stragglers there that were pretending and had become... Um, contaminate it with negative energy with jealousy with um a desire for more power or a different position or whatever the case may be and they had to get cleaned up too so before you knew it 
Mother Sophia and, and Source's decision room was overflowing with these beings. And again, once they were um, detected and brought to them, uh, we had no knowledge of what was transpiring. It was no longer for us to know. We just knew that it was getting cleaned up. Then every single faction that had these infiltrators also had um, contracts with the Draco reptilians to continue to cause harm to Earth's population. That has been their focus for a very, very long time. So I have never really been able to understand that. And I really don't really want to understand that because I used to say this in nursing and I'm, it, it definitely fits. I don't know why crazy people do crazy things. I don't know why someone who has so much positive options before you would choose the negative ones. I don't know, but they did. And that's the consequences of it. So we cleaned it all up. And Source and Mother Sophia took it very seriously. I was actually made aware of a few of their decisions and I was shocked and had to do some, my own shadow work over that. It wasn't for me to decide and it's, it, it's not for me to judge. I just had to deal with it. Father Yogananda came in and said this, I am very proud for all of you coming together. Do not worry about your crew members that were dismissed. They have been dealt with. With those no longer fighting against us, we should see much more progress with all things transitioning. If you need help, please stay engaged. Use LFG and on your own energy bodies. Anna, my sister, made this post in the crew room because it was such a gut punch to know that this kind of shit happened outside of Earth. This is what she says. I've always thought of life in the fifth dimension, Huna Matea, would be free of duality, like a vacation, where everything is sunshine and roses, where I can relax and let down my guard. With working on our transitions for the last month or so, I discovered duality exists in the fifth dimension. There is still fear of the unknown, fear of change, greed, those who want to seek power. I want everyone to understand that we are not transitioning to a place that we can relax and forget about our training on duality. As we ascend, duality decreases, but it still exists and requires discernment. And I'm going to touch on something that she didn't say. This, that's the end of her message. Part of our roles within the command are intergalactic emissaries. We engage with um, intergalactic emissaries of other planets and other space races. It is always done with a level of security and a level of confirmation that we are dealing with benevolent beings. And I can tell you that our gatekeepers are very good about making sure that this is exactly how it's supposed to be. However, even some of our gatekeepers who are the ascendant masters, who are amazing warriors in their own right, healers, leaders, transcendent souls, some of them too have been fooled by these deep, hidden, cloaked, nefarious beings that are pretending to be for the greater good of humanity, but are not. They have a deep, dark allegiance, a contract, an agreement to the dark. And they've been sought, they've been detected and, and taken care of. So we learn and we integrate that with every interaction that we have. So we're not just out there willy-nilly contacting every being on that's available. We're very select, selective of who and what we engage with. And those that try to trick us, those that try to um, pull one over, realize quickly that we are very good at discerning the bullshit. So that is what has to go with you when you ascend. You learn by interacting with people in this dimension how to detect the bullshit, right? 
you feel it in your body. That's how we say that. Like, it's not a matter of what comes out of someone's mouth. It's their energy. That's how you know they're real or they're not. And that's how you know that they're on the up and up or they're not. So you take that with you. You don't leave that lesson behind. You have that lesson for a reason. You have that lesson so you can go forth into higher dimensions and engage with intergalactic beings and not be made a fool of or not be harmed or not be taken captive. So I need you to get real with earth school and quit acting like you just got to wait for the bad days to end. Because if you're on the ascension path, you're expected to understand what discernment is and be decisive about who and what you share your energy with. And if you're still in this dimension, choosing on a daily basis to engage with beings that are not in your highest and best good and not serving you today in the now moment, then that is a problem and you will not fully ascend. This is a message from Aurelia, another sister. Rose colored glasses or shadow work. Please consider this. Are rose colored glasses a healthy way of dealing with experiences or are they a defense mechanism to avoid working through shadows? I'm all for optimism. However, when we go along to get along, all is well, we are often not stopping and allowing ourselves the opportunity to dig into what is really needing to be healed deep down below the rainbows and the shallow smiles. Duality, contrast, friction, it doesn't go away. It's how we learn our lessons and it's how our souls expand. And that's one thing that, that, I think people are really confused about like they think if they just dig their heels in and don't do it, then it's just going to go away and it will not. It's just like the lessons in your, in your incarnation. You may say, how come I keep attracting these narcissistic people in my life? Because you have lessons to learn from the narcissistic people and you're not learning them and you keep inviting them in. And whenever you learn the lesson and you change your behavior and you enforce healthy boundaries, the narcissist stops showing up. You're doing it. The crews of Starship Baba and New Jerusalem are really, really shaken by this. They had people in their, in their lives, in their day-to-day -day lives that all of a sudden were gone. And they were gone because they were traitors. And it is a gut punch and it is hard to get over. And, you know, it just comes from out of left field. And so we started having these town halls on the ship. So we would energetically set our intentions to go to Starship Baba and we would do brunch. We would do uh, crepes and we would have um, hot drink stations and Grandpa Ken would be over playing cards and we would do dancing and just all kinds of fun stuff just to engage with our crew. So that they had the opportunity to, to see that we love them. We're there to be compassionate and kind and supportive, but we're not going to let anybody get harmed. Not them, not us, not the people of earth. That's something we agreed to millions of years ago, and I don't take it lightly. So once they saw that we weren't just like running rough shot over anyone, it helped them understand that we really did mean what we said and we said what we meant. So we were, um, we would go, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour on one ship and then 45 minutes to, to an hour to the, to the other ship. And it had a, a huge positive effect for them. So they started to understand that they also had roles in new earth. And that was another thing. Like a lot of the beings on new Jerusalem have been there for a really long time because whatever their role was in their past lives was no longer needed and uh so they've kind of been it's kind of like the retirement home <laughs> for lack of a better word um they 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 energetically matter obviously they are important but they didn't have an active role and they were wondering well what are we going to do for the guardians they're doing all this stuff like where do we fit in should is it in our highest and best good to invite them in if they're just going to exclude us from everything so we stopped excluding them. We started including them. And then we started letting them know, like, these are the things that we have planned. These are the things that we're co-creating now. And you can help now. We don't have to wait. And so it immediately changed the dynamic and it immediately uh, boosted the energy of both ships. 
then we had really strong alliances there where they were not just allies because of being soul family or friends or whatever. Um, they were allied because they were invested in our success because our success was their success and also the success of the planet. So once we started doing the town halls, the anxiety dropped and the trust increased and it was palpable and it was very beautiful. And we started to see that um, it's just like when you have a QET session and uh, prior to that, you just know that you feel blocked and you feel funky and you got these chronic pain issues and nobody can tell you what's going on and you can't sleep and like all this stuff. You have so much going on, you can't really pinpoint the source. But when you're clear, it's like a blank canvas and you can see the speck of dirt that has fallen on it and you can easily clean it off. So once we had cleaned up, the ships and cleaned up the galactic alliance and cleaned up all these crews well then we saw that we had some issues that were still plaguing us so um we sent our dragons because we had energetically sensed there was still some um negatively aligned beings making decisions that affected all of humanity on the Pleiadian High Council. We found out that they had some dark contracts that that were very, very hidden in different ways that we hadn't detected before. And they thought they were in the clear because we had gone through and we cleared some things and they were still in their position. And so they had malevolent intent against the guardians and also against the people of earth. And this came out in a town hall and I got really pissed off. So I grabbed Akita and Anna and we went to the Palladian high council and I kicked in the door and I knew who the beings were that were culpable. And I had the dragons and unicorns remove them and take them to source immediately. And as soon as that was done, we had beings coming up to us and we had beings that we had a real relationship with like Mira and Maropa and Kaylin. And they came up to us immediately and said, we wanted, we knew things were happening that, that didn't make sense. It didn't add up. And we were so locked away, like the way that they process things, like you stay in your lane in your box and you don't deviate. Like, this is what you do. You don't question anybody above you. And it had been that way for such a long time that there was this built-in safety net that prevented whistleblowing basically, because they would, um, they would handle it before the truth could come out. And it was um, definitely a benefit that we took the actions that we did, that I, that we were decisive in the way that we did. So what I ultimately did was I, Akita and Anna took shifts at the, the Pleiadian High Council in the lead role because the leader was complicit and culpable. And we started to go through everything with a fine tooth comb. And in doing so, we had a lot of people come forth and said, look, this was presented a long time ago and they were just never acted upon it. And then we started to take appropriate action in a positive way and things started to happen. So when we did that, uh, those there, not everybody was in the room. I'll just say there was some guilty parties that escaped and they went straight over to the Dracos because that's who their agreements were with. And they, they wanted help. And they said, we got to take them down. We got to stop this. Who do they think that they are? And so we knew that they were coming for a big fight. So I then placed my space self, Tia, as the head of Palladian High Council, which gave me the ability to have the communications of all the other ancillary subgroups. And if I wasn't able to be there, then Akita is there. And if Akita is not able to be there, then Anna is there. And we continue to be on the Pleiadian High Council in that role. And so we were not going to allow anything to get 
beyond us because we were taking an active role on that council. I was done with letting um, the old establishments decide our fate. I was just done. So I took matters into my own hands. Did I ask for permission? No, I did not. That's kind of what I do. And like it or not like it, that's what I do. So some of these who really wanted to get back at us right away, they were going to come right back to the ships. Remember, this revelation came about when we were at a town hall on Starship Baba. And so I knew that we had to pull, we had to leave. We had to get off the ships to sac to not sacrifice our staff and our crew and our ships. So we decided that it would be really good for the the crews of Starship Baba at New Jerusalem to be able to like watch us live stream our our battle that was happening in real time. Like all, all this was coming about. Nothing was pre-planned. We didn't know this was going to be a revelation of our town hall that day. And now all of a sudden we know that this big battle is coming and we're developing the plan on the fly. And so I, I said, just, it's basically, um, our, our suits kind of have the, a, an aspect of what you could correlate to body cam footage as well as our ships and our Jedi and all that stuff. So we just streamed it on all the, the video feeds on both ships. So there's transparency. You can see, you can hear, you can experience uh, what was trans, what was transpiring at that time. So now I'm going to get into the transcript of the beginning of us responding to this threat that's coming along. The the guardians at play here are myself, Lucy, Anna, Akita, Aurora, and Aurelia. I get a lot of energy when I go through this because it's such a big battle. I don't really know what this is going to end up looking like, but we'll just go with it. Okay, Lucy, combine the six horsemen with the Olympians for the highest level of attack. Krishna's bow with direct energy targeting, Poseidon's trident, and all swords with extra dragon glass. Safety and security of Starship Baba at New Jerusalem crews are paramount, and we need to lure them off the ships where is a neutral site for battle. Source creator. Unleash the fury. This has to end now. The dark is trying, but the light wins. Those on starships need to also take ownership of this and defend and contribute. Programming the weapons to seek out low frequency and negative cloaked entities. This is me again, Lucy. All weapons requested will be programmed to detect all low frequency and malevolent beings. This is high tech, off world or tech. It may sound really far-fetched to you, but this is something we do all the time. <clears throat> Lucy, open a ship-wide message. Alert the crew that the Guardians are leaving the ships for the safety of the crews. I am challenging the Dark to meet the Guardians at a neutral base outside of Pluto and Neptune. Endings and beginnings. Today will be full of both. Some Archangels and security will stay behind in Baba and New Jerusalem. Will f with full permission to vaporize all malevolent attackers, if any infiltrate the protections of the ships. We have our weapons. We have our plan. We have our teams. We have security and we have protections. Akita, do we need to flood Christ consciousness through both ships to detect any negative and low frequencies? Lucy, yes. My weapons are the Spear of Longinax. Excalibur sword, the trident of Poseidon. This is not scripted attack. This is a fly by the seat of your pants, full frontal assault. Lucy, to all dark forces who want to stop the guardians, I invite you to try the coordinates where we will be is sent out to you now. Commander Andalusia, Kingdom of Mu. Akita. Battle in the light of the central sun. The 5D energies will weaken them and strengthen us. The photon energy is pure love from source creator and mother Sophia. And the dark, just like the vampires, don't do well in the light. 
Lucy, Akita, and Anna, join me now with our Jedis and launch for the base now. We have within us the power of all the gods and their weapons. It is our clear intent determination that will win this battle. We are now arriving at the base in three, two, one. Ensure our backup is between us and them. This is about to get elevated. Be ready. The trident of, to the heart of every mofo. <laughs> Akita, lightning bolts bolts really evaporate them and it's hilarious lucy i neutralized the one talking shit to me and blew up their ships all hidden and cloaked ships are now being exposed akita lightsabers swipe away incoming bolts of lightning to go find them lucy now our space selves do what we do best kick names and take ass <laughs> now if you don't know, that's a line from Guardians of the Galaxy, and I didn't mess it up. Akita, dire wolves are chasing down the runners. Aurelia, watch your flanks. Lucy, set out for the next phase of attack. I get up. I set up a grid of high frequencies to trap them and disrupt their cloaking systems. As they show themselves, blow them up. Anna, zip behind the mothership and shoot photon torpedoes multiplied by infinity. Weapons will target the soulless beings. Leah, another set is trying to circle around you. Aurora, legions of angels are coming to assist. Lucy, launch all weapons multiplied by infinity and seek all dark malevolent soulless beings. Follow me. Three, two, one. Fly up and over and then fire. Leah, you just took out 70% with that move. Lucy, back to the opposite side. There's a cloaked flank there. Let's do the same maneuver. Leah, there's a big mothership coming. It's cloaked with many minions on there. Only a few can be seen from the dark side of where you are now. Lucy, asking source for Brahman. Set all dark on fire with one shot. Multiplied Jedis times one million and attack. My own version of the Iron Dome has been dropped in front of us. For those escaping, they are burning up upon impact. Leah, they're surrounded and they keep doing this kamikaze suicide thing into the dome. Lucy, death is what they want and death is what they shall get. Command the remaining light forces to give 100%. The Guardians cloak and leave the decoy. The decoy on the base so let me explain that we can multiply our weapons and ourselves and our ships as many times as we want replicators 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 and they're not nefarious they are us repl replicated so we can do that <laughs> um we can also cast a hologramic holographic image a hologram of us to be somewhere as a cloak as a as a decoy and then we are then cloaked somewhere else waiting for them to go attack the hologram and then we attack them and that's what i meant by that lucy let's fly cloaked forwards toward the incoming motherships and photon blast them in three two one akita Nuke them from the orbit to be sure. Riding my dragon, chasing the last of the runners away. L Lucy, great central sun, illuminate the rest of the hidden forces. Those seen now are being vaporized. Aurora, there's a shit ton headed your way, and they came from somewhere between Saturn and Uranus. Pun not intended. <laughs> ah, so funny. Lucy, calling in all archangels, warriors of light, please join us. Aurora, source is sending more. Lucy, multiply all Jedis times infinity. All horsemen times infinity. The Iron Dome and galactic version over our base. Leah, weave gold and silver into whatever weapons you're using. Aurora, please confirm the Galactic Alliance, Space Force are also assisting source sending every asset. Lucy, they will not get through. Leah, they're exploding in space, hitting the outer dome. Aurora, 
source is standing above the dome. I always get chills with this part. Woo. Lucy, source's forces are getting them from behind us. Leah, some are coming around to try that way, blasting with various things, but the dome is repelling all of it. Leah, the bright light coming off of source is blinding and it's so intense. They appear in limbo at the dome and I feel source is about to send a ver reverberating finish this kind of blast. Lucy, that is what I'm feeling too. Source will finish this. Aurora, oh yeah, he's got lightning rods. These guys are so fucked. <laughs> Leah, those here are, are trapped in a web and they're not getting away. We are all going to feel this blast galactically and within us. Fair warning. Yes, they are. I can see how it will reverberate. And Aurora, do you see Source raising his arms? Aurora, I hear him counting down. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Leah, now I see blasts of light everywhere. Akita, oh my God, my heart chakra is on fire. Lucy, my hands and my head and my heart are pulsating. Akita, my chest is palpating. Aurora, the sun just got way brighter here. Akita, source energy is channeling, channel, channeling through my heart chakra. Leah, all has been vaporized. Woo. Big energy. The soul's of my soul family members, my siblings are hundreds of millions of years old. That's true. We originally were born in our human incarnation in Lemuria one, and we existed in other planets and other space races prior to that. We were hunted, persecuted, ridiculed, and still kept mission focused life after life after life and then this truth comes out some betrayed us in previous lives too we always were so grateful to find our soul family members when we checked a soul status to see that they had a soul that their soul was of the light and in alignment to source creator and on our crew we just really felt like that connection would be enough but at the end of the day sometimes it wasn't because they were old magic inc incantations, we were assisted with Merlin and Morgana giving us some of the verbiage that was used in the incantations back then because we didn't have the memories of them yet. And that assisted us in unraveling and reversing a lot of the spells, a lot of the curses and a lot of the hexes. So we were able to do that. We were able to unravel a lot of their protections that way and find them and unraveling their cloaks, their hidden, um, their maskings, all the things. My motivation is clear. Act in the greater good of all in alignment to source creator, always. Unwavering, 100% of the time. It's not about me. It's never been about me. It's about the mission. We are called to be resolute, even with those we love who chose to betray us, betray our trust, sending us harmful attacks and participating and causing harm to others. The mission is the priority. The hold my beer battle solidified my own resolve to this and to our mission. Through that win, we understood that we would always find beings who selfishly wanted to stop what our mission is to achieve, which is a higher consciousness dimension world who functions in unity consciousness and Christ consciousness for the greater good of all. And when those beings fall short of that, and do not align with Christ consciousness and unity consciousness and start hurting others, there are going to be consequences. Whether it is a soul sibling, a father, a brother, a husband, a 
a child, the consequences have to be given. And then they go to see the archangels and they get healed. They may have to repeat a incarnation or 20. I don't know. It's not up to me. But they get forgiven. They get love and they get gratitude for showing us the truth and helping us learn how to navigate the new life that we have and every day forward. We stay in the now moment. We understand our role. We understand how powerful it is and how much change we can actually facilitate within ourselves and within the, the world that we want to live in. When negative, chaotic things occur in our world, like they are right now, it is a choice to give that your attention or turn away. And I recommend you turning away because nothing good will come of that. It's not for us. If you're awake, which you're watching me, you are. This message has to hit you in the heart. And no, there are really, really good people working, working together for the greater good of humanity. And we want you with us. We don't want you to keep falling for the same old BS that the dark controllers have been feeding us for thousands and thousands of years. That time has to end. And it ends individually with each of us saying, no, I no longer fall for your BS. I understand that there is a better life and I'm going to facilitate the change to obtain that better life right now. It starts with me, just like it can start with you. I choose this daily and I am very motivated to see it through whatever that looks like and wherever it, that takes me. If you're interested in clearing your energy so that you too can have these amazing uh, conversations with Source Creator, the guidance from Mother Sophia, the nurturing, the loving, the healing, it is all available to you. All you have to do is take the first step and reach out. VioletLotusEnergy.com. You can contact me there. There's chats. There's emails. Truth Resonates podcast drops every Friday morning at 6 a.m., that's where the mission details get dropped first. And then I do these video follow-ups usually a week or two later. Thank you for joining me today. And I'll see you again next time.